cross-examining is to ask questions, um, to show, maybe bring out facts that the witness didn't testify about, or make things clearer, or perhaps show the witness is not telling the truth, or that the witness is biased for one side, or and perhaps the, the facts they testified about should be taken by the judge with a grain of salt. Um, teens also have a right to confront their accusers in court and give their own version of what happened. Like for example, someone might say, this person hit me in the hallway at school and the person who's alleged to hit the other person doesn't believe that happened. They can testify about what they think happened. Teens can also introduce evidence on their own behalf. They can bring in witnesses and they can have them subpoenaed and the court can make witnesses come and testify. Um, teens also have a right not to te testify against themselves in a delinquency case. And the state has to prove a delinquency charge by what standard, what legal standards? Anybody know? It's beyond a reasonable doubt, just like in the adult court cases. So that means that the uh, state of Indiana, through the prosecutor's office, has to prove delinquency, that it's much more likely true than not true that something happened, that someone was guilty of committing a delinquent act. Uh, teens also have a right who are in the delinquency system once they've been uh, found to have committed a delinquent act to have the probation officer work with them about their case plan and also the right to choose a child representative who's an adult to work with them about their case plan for their future and how the issues that are, that are in their way to prevent them from doing a good job and staying out of trouble, how those can be resolved. Uh, sometimes um, when teens' parents aren't able to care for them or they've had problems caring for them or they've been abused or neglected, they might have a child in need of services petition filed in juvenile court. That's the other main thing that the juvenile courts decide. And in the Chins cases, every teen has a court-appointed representative. This person is called a guardian ad litem or a court-appointed special advocate. Has anybody had any experience with either of these roles? Yes, a few. Um, and the guardian ad litem or the court-appointed special advocate is a trained adult person. They might be a lawyer. They might be um, a community volunteer. But their, their role is to investigate facilitate, advocate, and monitor the situation to be sure that the child's best interest is met by the orders that the court makes. So the guardians ad litem will often stay on a teen's case until the teen is grown or their, their case is closed, and they want to learn what teens would like for themselves, and also to learn what would be best plan for them as to where they might live or what services they might get like counseling or education. Um, in, the, in some Chins cases, the court can also appoint a lawyer, like, like is done in delinquency cases, and the lawyer um, argues for what the child, what the teen wants. I'm sorry I used the word child. All the laws say child, and I know you're not children, but in Indiana, anybody who's under 18 is called a child <laughs> in our laws, even though you don't feel like you're a child. You're almost grown up, right? Um, so in a delinquency case, your court-appointed attorney might um, help you prove that the delinquency charge is not true. They might also argue for you to have the least restrictive placement, that is to be at home or with a relative instead of in boys' school or girls' school. And I think Mr. Rivers is signaling that I need to wrap up. Is that correct, sir? <laughs> I think it's yes. Okay. So in any event, it's some of the things that um, in Chin's cases it's important to remember is that Child Welfare, the Department of Child Services, must make efforts to reunify you or to find another permanent family. And if you're 14 or older, you have a right to um, let the court know your wishes in court and to choose a child representative in addition to your guardian ad litem. And if you leave the system, you have a right to help with that. 
to help to further your education and also to get your legal documents like your birth certificate, social security card, medical records, other things to help you in the future. There are also programs to help teens further their education or live in what's called a collaborative care situation after they leave foster care. And some of the financing for uh, education after high school also applies to teens who were adopted at age 16 and older who had been children in need of services in the system. They also may qualify for some benefits for college. And I think Mr. Rivers is saying I need to be done. Is that correct, sir? Any questions? You can take a question. I hope some of you will consider becoming lawyers and follow in the footsteps of other lawyers so that the older ones of us can eventually retire and you can take charge of things and do your best. And I hope you have a great rest of the day and a safe trip home. Thank you.